Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome to another uh, Ubuntu community team q and I forget which video this was. Uh, so um, we've got uh, Daniel Martin and Michael over in uh, Austin, Texas, I believe you are. Yes. That's right. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll come to them in a moment. If you've got any questions, uh, we've we've lined these guys up because they're experts in Snappy, uh, which is something quite new in the Ubuntu world. So if you've got any questions related to Snappy, uh, get them in now, and uh, we'll fire them at those guys because they are the experts. Um, I just wanted to do a couple of announcements before we do that. Uh, first of all, uh, we've got the Ubuntu release fifteen oh four, the Vivid Vervit. Uh, which is coming up next Thursday as we record this. So that's, what, the 23rd of April, I think. Uh, yeah, Thursday, 23rd of April. So, yeah, we're still making a desktop. And uh, it uh, that that release, uh, you know, we, we tend to celebrate the releases every six months. Um, and uh, you can contact your local community team and uh, organize some kind of event, anything you like, whether it's, you know, going to a coffee shop just for an hour and uh, having a chat or, uh, you know, a big party or any size in between. Uh, if you register it on loco.ubuntu.com, that's loco.ubuntu.com, then other people can see where it is. You can put links to the location and have a map there and all that kind of stuff. People can leave comments when they've, you know, if they need to buy a ticket or something, you can put all of that detail in there and, uh, and people can come along and uh, celebrate the release of the, what is it, the 20 something release of Ubuntu, 21st, 22nd, something like that. Could be, yep. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and we also have another thing coming up soon, which uh, I wanted to mention, also, which is the. Yes, uh, go on. Just real quick on localubuntu.com, you can also get a lot of information about how to contact other local teams. Uh, so if you want to know, how do I organize a party? What do I need to bear in mind? How do I get in touch with other teams? We have all that information there, and it's it's quite easy to use. So have a look at local.ubuntu.com. And the thing to, to note about these kind of events at release time is you don't need any kind of approval to do this. We don't like you know vet the events or anything like that. We don't say you know you can do this type of event, you can't do that type of event. If you just want to get a bunch of people together and go bowling or something like that then do that you know there's no there's no hard and fast rules about you know what makes uh, a right or wrong uh, release party we've had all kinds of things uh, we've had people making up cocktails for the release of uh, ubuntu and uh, you know people having parties in bars or barbecues you know anything just get together with friends and uh, you know have a chat about what's going on in ubuntu and other stuff as well um the other thing I wanted to mention was the Ubuntu Online Summit. So as soon as we do a release, uh, you know, we start, well, we've already started planning the, the next release. Mm -hmm. And uh, we come together during uh, the Online Summit, which is just after the release, um, and uh, finish off that planning and look ahead to what's coming in the next release. So that'll be 1510 and beyond that, uh, 1604 and the next LTS beyond that as well. Uh, if you get if you go to summit.ubuntu.com summit.ubuntu.com uh, you'll find details of when the Ubuntu online summit is uh, it's uh, 5th to the 7th of May uh, so that's a Tuesday through to a Thursday and we generally start at two o'clock UTC until eight o'clock UTC so that we can cover you know it's difficult because of time zones but we try and cover as many uh, time zones as possible and we've got a bunch of tracks uh, we've got an app and scope development track. So if you're interested in that, um, there'll be sessions there. Uh, we've got a cloud track, a community track, a convergence track, a core track, and a show and tell track. Um, and you can schedule your own uh, sessions. You can register sessions in summit.ubuntu.com. Uh, put all the details of what you want to discuss, and then we'll slot it in a particular time. If you, if you want to, um, uh, request a particular time on a particular day than you can do otherwise it will just get slotted in uh, wherever or we can contact you to find out when the best time for you is um, and once they're all slotted in uh, you can plan out your day and pick which ones you're going to attend through uh, summit um, if you have any sessions you'd like to see scheduled either get a bunch of people together or just create a session yourself and then start promoting it and bring people together 
and uh, you can hang out and plan for the next release and beyond. Have I missed anything out there, Daniel? No, no, sounds good to me. Cool. So um, I'll hand over to Daniel in just a sec, but if you've got any questions, then the IRC channel you want to be in is Ubuntu-on-air, Ubuntu-on-air. Uh, if you just go to ubuntuonair.com, the channel is just below, and you can uh, ask your questions there. If you prefix them with the word question, then I'll see them and I'll fire them at these guys. But until the questions come in, I'll hand over to you, Daniel. Brilliant. Yeah, this is a very special day because I have Martin Albizetti here and Michel Vogt as well. And because we want to have them in, in full HD, uh, we went up to this hotel room because the internet down in the basement, that's where we're stuck right now for, for planning, uh, is just not good enough. Um, both of them are absolute Ubuntu heroes, like they landed millions of things in Ubuntu already. Um, but now in the last, how long has it been? How long have you been working on, on Snappy? Six months, I would say. Yeah, October was it? October, I believe so. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah a little bit more than six months. Yeah. So, why Snappy? What are we trying to do? What is the thing? So the, the first thing is, I, I think it's so. First, let me be pedantic. I think it's actually going to core. It's what we're talking about is going to core. Snappy is is the new packaging format and the command line tool. I, but I think it's really, like what we're building is, is Ubuntu core. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's probably a better name for it and a better way to, to, to talk about it. So mm -hmm. that's, <clears throat> so why, why are we building this? So I think, I think there's many reasons why we're building it. I, um, I think we basically took Ubuntu and 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 look at how 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 are people building devices today, right? It's a it's a crazy range of devices that it was ten years ago, right? So what are what are the what are the real life problems that users, developers, and system builders are having? And we basically said, ignoring reality, what would a perfect system look like? Mm -hmm. um, so we spent some some really fun times working with a really great group of people, thinking about that and just and just kind of going through it. And then <clears throat> looking at the landscape of what we had within Ubuntu and 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 slowly making Ubuntu core reality, right? Just based on just uh, let's look at the problem from scratch and let's build something from from the bottom up that is that fits really neatly uh, with the uh, with what we think is is, is what um, the market is right. is needing. Um, yeah, and it's it's from like from a technical point of view, it's absolutely fascinating right now because we are building it. Um, first, we we we're building it from scratch, which is great because it, it means we can we can do a lot of stuff that you know we couldn't do otherwise. It's also um, like it's very lean. It's transactional. It's um, it's very secure because we are building like Apparam or SecCom, like right in it from the bottom up. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it's part of the core, um, and it it will also be super easy to build applications on top of it. I mean, that's that was one of the big goals, like make it really simple for people to leverage it to build products on top of it, to build systems on top of it, to build. Yeah, yeah. with with minimal knowledge of our platform yeah. and. And just make use of the product-specific knowledge you have. With a little bit of work, you get it into Ubuntu, which which has been a historical problem, right? Today, if you want to get a complex piece of software into Ubuntu, you you do need to either gain a lot of domain expertise or find a set of people who are willing to bridge between the the, the domain expertise of getting something into the distribution model, and also knowing about the product in a way where it could be packaged and just over the years, we've seen so many people come and fail to do that, and a lot of great things that never came to the platform. And I think we've had this for a very long time. We've tried many things. We we tried to build infrastructure where we would uh, try to automatically package software. Mm -hmm. We we really spent many thousands of hours trying to 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 improve the situation. 
And I think at some point real, we realize this is this is the wrong way to do it. We should uh, sit down and think about it, the problem more um, systematically. In a more fundamental way, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think we we basically took all the cards and reshuffled and 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 this is this is what we have for core. So so and I I think one of the most interesting things it has is it's a set, different set of promises that we make, mm -hmm. and it's a set, different set of constraints you have due to the promises, right? So, right. one of the promises we make is your system is never going to be broken. It is never ever going to be broken, right? We we promise that um, for for the system, and we promise that for for apps, right? At, at least at the installation level. So, <clears throat> in today's world that is really valuable because you have all sorts of crazy devices cropping up and like hundreds of devices light bulbs and all kinds of crazy things for iot but just servers and there's all kinds of of, of devices and in the end end users aren't really fans of being sysadmins of their other devices and um so we think we think that that in itself is a is a big part of it. I don't know if you have anything else you wanna. No, it's it's exactly what you said. I mean, like like it is it is built to be fail safe. I mean, even if stuff goes wrong, there is always like a rollback target that you that you can roll back to. I mean, that, that it will roll back automatically, yeah, right? Exactly. So Snappy will always leave you in a working state, and. We didn't. We didn't think that the way the current the distro model worked right now, we could do that. Right, the transactional updates of the system and transactional updates of the of the, yeah. of the apps. Right, the the combination of everything in the system today. I mean, it's there's so many combinations. Anything breaks, everything's broken. So, um, for from a technical point of view, either your system is either in one version or another version, and we have. Once a, an update applies, it either applies and works, or it doesn't and, roll back, and it rolls back. And we can update systems with a lot of certainty, right? We're, we're doing binary updates of your system, right? Binary diff of your whole system, which is a, how we guarantee the transactionality. So if I was to, to summarize, for, <clears throat> for users, it means they have a secure device using Ubuntu, fail safe, it's all great. Yeah. For Hardware manufacturers, it means they can concentrate on, on creating their product. They don't have to maintain a Linux distribution, basically. Correct. What does it mean for enthusiasts? What crazy things can you think <laughs> of? What, what's, what's possible? Like, what's next? I don't know. Use it. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the fun part about enthusiasts. I mean, they come up with ideas that are just amazing. I mean, like, like get a, a cheap Raspberry Pi too, or get a BeagleBone Black. I mean, it's it's thirty forty dollars, and you can start building stuff on top of it. I mean, we have ports for for these platforms, and Ubuntu Core will run on it, and it will be great. And I've seen we've seen I've seen videos of people doing, I mean, you know, doing doing helicopters. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. I think the the same things that hardware manufacturers get, I think enthusiasts like it, so they get those same benefits, right? They, they they don't have to worry about the distro. They just take something, it works, and it'll have the benefit that even though it's your hobby, it's just something in your garage, it'll still be up to date. It'll be, still be secure, right? So you, and I think everybody, I, don't, I think everybody benefits from that. And, um, and we also give you. Like we have a we have a we have a we have a software store, right? So we also give you a way to go from a hobby to maybe a a small niche thing to a a market product. So there's a there's a path for you to to, to take something cool you built and then maybe up to the to the to the store and then other folks start to to download it and use it and you get some feedback and then suddenly you're you're kind of distributing your either your app or your whole kind of bundle of of, of things you put together on a, to, a, to a wider audience, right? And we will support the small enthusiast in his garage to the like big distribution network of you know millions of devices, and and we've set set up the platform in a way where that can happen, right? And, and, and that person can just as easily ship that app as a big company can, which today I think was was quite uneven. It's quite uneven in this right? 
Can I ask a couple of questions? Sure, sure. So uh, I had a couple of questions myself, and th these are things that I've heard other people, you know, mention online, and uh, you know, it's it's good to corner a couple of you and uh, ask you these kind of things. So, if, so you you mentioned the uh, Raspberry Pi too. So currently, you know, if I have a Raspberry Pi, I go and download a distribution of some kind, and I stick it on an SD card, and I boot the thing, and then if I want to update that, I either you know flash another SD card or I apt get you know, dist upgrade or, or whatever if that's if that's supported. So, how will that change in the snappy world? What will I what will I do as an enthusiast that's different from that model right now? You you would put it on the SD card and then you would do nothing and your system would be up to date. Okay, so I, I I just leave it be and you know it might reboot to a new kernel now and then or it might just update the libraries or whatever. Correct. Um, so I, as a, as a user, I don't have to, you know, if I want some uh, app that talks to my helicopter, for example, my remote control helicopter, and I want to control that with my Raspberry Pi, um, you know, I'm assuming at some point in this mythical future, someone's put that app in the Snappy store, mm -hmm. and I can type magical commands or operate via a web UI or something and say, install that thing, and that will just constantly be up to date. Is that yeah. what I should envisage? On its own, yeah. I mean, Snappy, like Snappy, Snappy's default mode is autopilot, right? Like, you, you want to be secure all the time as quickly as possible, and um, if there's a security update, we think you want it now and not in a week. You might not want to spend the time sysadming, you know, and, and trying to get it to, you're trying to fly your, your drone and we're telling you to spend 10 minutes updating your device. That's probably the, the wrong time. You're not going to want to do that at that point, right? So you still want to secure your system. So that and, is, and you, it is. And you, you mentioned by default, it, you know, auto updates. But you know, a lot of people like a lot of control over their devices, and they like to be able to say, "No, I want to update this," you know, because I don't want the sand changing underneath me while I'm developing my app. Uh, you know, can I keep things rock solid and then you know update every Tuesday or something, rather than you know come down in the morning and find the work I did last night no longer works? Or yeah, I, I think we'll probably give people control over it so you'll be able to, to, to configure it but it'll but it won't be the default like if you really want if you want to do that that's okay I mean but that that's an explicit opt-in decision rather than the other way around yeah okay the other thing worth mentioning is um, so even if you get updated and stuff breaks you can always roll back like we have a built-in rollback command where you can roll back your system you can roll back specific applications you can roll back to your last version you can roll back any number of versions that we keep on disk. I mean, we keep three versions on disk by default, uh, but you can tweak this value. So um, you know, it, it is it is unlike now where if an update is broken, you know, you, you have a hard time. It's really you know, if an update is broken, which is unlikely, you it's just one command and you are back. Right. So in in the old world, we had uh, Debian packages that had scripts inside them that would do stuff during package installation is that all gone away you know can, can i be confident that when I, I i could like roll back and forward at any point to any you know any snappy package yes there is no maintainer scripts anymore i mean that's that's a major source of, of errors basically um and and it also makes the rollback case for devs very tricky and that, that those are just eliminated i mean we, we provide Different mechanisms for this, but but it's all transactional, so there is no risk of stuff, you know. So, do, does the application developer need to be more cognizant of the configuration that their application has that it can support going backwards and forwards, and you know, because you, you know you move forwards, and I think of something that moves from. SQLite 2 to an SQLite 3 database, and then you find something's broken, so you roll back, and now you've got an SQLite three database with an app that only uses SQLite two, that kind of thing. Right. So we are also copying the data. So if you if you if you if you update, we also ensure that your, your current data is snapshotted. So if stuff breaks and you roll back, you, you always have the previous data available as together with the previous application. So that's that's safe as well. Okay, cool. So getting on to that subject of Debs, because people keep asking this. 
uh, is this the replacement for you know, Debian packages? Does that mean at some point in the future, you just won't ever do apt-get? It would be you know snappy or whatever <clears throat> commands. <clears throat> I think that I think that uh, that answer. I think we don't know yeah. the answer to that. I think um, it depends, right? On on the the reality is on the phone today. Even though you can opt get, if you do, you you basically opt out of like you you've taken ownership of your device and you've opted out of updates and everything. So the reality is on the phone today, you don't have opt get opt get updates, right? And it makes sense. On Snappy, app, like Ubuntu Core doesn't come with app. At all or DPKG at all it doesn't doesn't exist there and and you you couldn't even make it work because it, it's a it's a completely read only file system. Um, I think um, I think we're slow we'll, we'll slowly start to converge the desktop for example and we'll 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 see how it goes. Like I think we'll we'll likely have on the desktop you'll be able to do snappy install and app get install at the same time, which probably means you won't get any other of the promises from Ubuntu Core, but you'll get snappy applications and some benefits from that. And I think we'll see. Yeah, I think we will see. I mean, it's um, so. I mean, Dapp and and Apt are, are great technologies to build distributions, and um, they are doing what you know what they are supposed to do really well. For this device use case, we are we are we are talking about here. Um, they are not ideally suited. Um, so I, I see a future where we have both uh, co-installable, basically, and um, we will see. I mean, um, it, you know, it, it is it is hard to predict, but I can imagine a future where we have where we have a perfectly working app in, in on your Snappy system, and um, you have like a. You, you could even have multiple uh, multiple containers that contain like where you can run apt and you have you know um, uh, a one container for your for your for your web server one container for your database and they, they talk to each other and then you have snappy where you have your third your, your say your message queue engine thing running I mean I think at least in the in the in the medium term um, apt is not going away. Um, no, and, and we build Ubuntu Core from the yeah, archive. Exactly. So, use, yeah. and I don't, I don't, I don't see a future where we're not building Ubuntu Core from the archive. So, I think at the you know at the very least, it'll always be a as as Vio said, a, a system builder tool, yeah. and we're going to still use that because for that purpose, it's a fantastic, well, you know, battle tested <laughs> tool, right? So, so the message I'm getting is, at some point, maybe in the future, possibly, if this all pans out and you know plans work, there could be a, a desktop which is, uh, you know, doesn't have app, doesn't have Debian packages, but is is uh, snappy only. Now we've we've introduced uh, in Ubuntu Phone the click packages. Uh, as you said, we generally don't recommend people do. Uh, apt or you know depackage on the phone you can but we generally recommend you don't um is there a transitional period in between now and that mythical future where the phone will switch to snaps and instead of clicks so so it's interesting right because ubuntu core like we actually built ubuntu core while we were building the phone right i mean we we solved all the hard problems that, that gave us Ubuntu Core when we built Touch. So Ubuntu Core is, is, a, is a really small part of Touch. So we, because we felt it was important to not cargo cult any, <clears throat> anything, we, we, did, we did work on a lot of things from scratch, and one of it is the, is, is the packaging format. They are, not, they are not massively different. So they are not, I don't think it would be a, it would be a lot of work to have the, the phone run run snaps or eventually re, rebase the phone on Ubuntu Core. So have the touch code base be Ubuntu Core with all the touch stack on top, which is which is really the the, the right way to build it. Um, I don't I don't think we're in a rush to to push that. I think we I think we we ship the phone that there's 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 there's, there's many people using it. And 
I think we should focus on making sure we keep shipping phones and people have a good experience and we'll we'll evolve the we'll evolve the technology. Um, and when it makes sense we'll we'll do that rebasing essentially. But I, I don't know we I don't know that we know when that's gonna happen. Um, I do think we could like the bridging, we could say we're going to move all developers to focus on snaps. So instead of having clicks and snaps and having developers to have to understand depths, clicks, or snaps and, and understand which, which one to use for which platform, I think we could say um, when you use the SDK, when you use tooling to build, you always build snaps. You upload snaps to the store. And the store generates clicks on the fly and serves them to devices that still use clicks and serves snaps to devices that use snaps. Because in a way, I think click is a subset of the features that snaps have. So we could take a snap and generate a click. So I think that I think that might be the smart way for us to do it, to have to, to, to simplify it for developers so they don't have to worry about this. Users don't care about this because they don't see any of it. Um, and we kind of bridge this until we 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 basically move the touch code base over to root to core. Okay. One of the one of the trickier questions that that I've seen asked quite a bit is uh, related to third party ISVs who have you know invested some time in creating Debian packages for whatever their software is. So you know from tiny company to you know Oracle or whoever who have these gigantic Debian packages that install successfully on on Ubuntu or tarballs or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a do we have a, a path a trajectory for for those companies to go from what they are what they're doing now creating you know self extracting tarballs or whatever with you know a shell script with a giant binary attached to the bottom to yeah. uh, you know and and Debian packages through to you know doing what we think is uh, um, the future of package delivery. It's not just companies, right? We have a huge archive of tens of thousands of applications. It's, it's not right. just companies. Yeah, I mean, we really care about this problem. I mean, Snap is a really simple packaging format, but by design, right? So I, I don't think it's, I don't think, I think a tractable problem would likely be to say, we'll eventually might have a tool where you take a dev and it, and it converts it to a Snap. I think that's that's over time. That's that's going to be a a tool we believe we can build. So I because the snap format is is simple and really self-contained. Like really building a tool that takes a takes a Debian package, brings in all the dependencies, compiles them, puts them in the right right a right way, and generates a snap for a person who knows nothing at all about Ubuntu Core or snap packages. Just give me a dev. Here's a snap package. I think I think we could I think we could have the tooling to 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 help that that transition. So so you were basically asking two questions. I mean, you were asking about their packages specifically, and also about the shell script that self extract and do all this you know this interesting stuff. And um, I actually I, I believe like with uh, Snappy we we are actually making it much much easier easier for these corporations. Um, I mean, if you look at stuff like Mozilla or, or LibreOffice, I mean, they provide they provide pre-built binaries that bundle the, the important libraries. They test this, they QA this. It's basically ready to go. Like you you download it, you unpack it, and, and boom. And that's really all we need for Snappy. I mean, um, if if the company builds, if if the company or the individual builds a, a binary that can run from your current directory, you we are good, right? It's a snap. Like you, you just run snappy build and it's done. Like this is your snap. Well, okay, you need to add a little bit of metadata, but but really it's it's not like like you need to set up like you know build dependencies and figure out like like you know what 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 I don't know. The newest packaging standards. Yeah, exactly, out. exactly. I mean and and no rules file to write. I mean you don't you, you don't even have to like even if you if you build it by hand, like if you type in GCC commands by hand, if you don't have a build system, it will, it will still be it will still work. And that's that's actually what what we think is, is is one of the really important features of Snappy, making it really really that simple for all these people to ship their stuff. Okay, cool. Um, 
I had another question and it's just escaped my mind, sorry. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was related to, uh, oh, that was it. Uh, so on the phone at the moment, we have a concept of frameworks. So you, know, you target a particular framework and you know, we guarantee that that software will work on that release of phone that ships that is claiming to support that framework. And if you, if we ship a new version of the SDK that has new components and new uh, libraries and you want to use those, then you target that framework. Can you, can you talk a bit about how frameworks work in Snappy? How do I, how do I, how do I target, you know, what, how do I know what I, what I need to target that has the support that I need? <laughs> I'll give it a try. Okay. <clears throat> So, so Ubuntu Core is a really, really small, and we are going to continually, continuously focus on making it as small as we can possibly make it. Right. So anything we can remove from it, we will remove from it. That means that most of anything interesting that your application uses will be bundled with your application. Right. So you will be. Like thinking about just core, you will you will depend on very very little on core because very, core will provide very very little on itself, right? So I know that, there are no man pages, for example. You type man, no, no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, no w get, no like it's 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 really a really really thin. Like it is really the core, right? So. <clears throat> So I think that's the first driving principle, right? So frameworks in core are meant to extend the functionality of the of the core system, right? So it has to it adds functionality. So for example, if you wanted to build a phone out of core, you would you would you would need a mirror framework, right? And you would you would need a framework for the touch stack and the Qt, you know, Qt and Unity. You probably have a Unity framework that, that came with all of that. So um so, so you now you have now have multiple levels, right? So, so, so I think for touch and the concept of touch and frameworks, I think that that still applies, right? But you're you're up you're you're up the stack. What we've done now is we we've, we've enabled you to to be able to go down the stack to to just the just the really basics, right? You you don't have to ship all of touch on a on a light bulb, right? You can you can just ship core, have your tiny very specific. Uh, Snappy application and and that's it, right? But if you want to build a like a phone or a smart TV or something like really complex, you can and you extend that with frameworks. Um, so, so, so yeah. would the current an analogy for that be uh, in the in the Debian packaging world? We have you know a meta package that says I need a web server or I need a mail server and that's serviced by you know Exim or Postfix or whatever and a web server is serviced by you know NGINX or those, those things comply with that that rule. So in Snappy you would have my application requires you know a this and a that and a the other and the other people could provide things that provide those libraries or pieces of software or other components that I need for my snap is that yeah possible? as long as they're extending the system functionality right and 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 this is something we want to carefully manage because they are going to have privileged access to the system right because they're going to be extending it so for snaps you just upload to the store it's automatically reviewed it's there. You you create an app. It's it's literally available in thirty seconds. If you want to build a framework, it's something it's something we have to collaborate on with people, right? So, for example, if somebody wanted to build a, a framework to do Zigbee, right? It's one of these IoT protocols. That'd be fantastic. But we'd have to we'd have to work together on on how are we going to confine it properly? How are we going to make sure apps can access it, but they can't abuse it? How are we going to make sure it doesn't no, it doesn't break any of the promises we're making with Snappy. So I think, um, yeah, I, I think that is a good analogy. But we, we but there's a caveat there where frameworks are going to extend the system and going to have some privileged access. So we we, we want to work with the people creating these frameworks to do them well. 
so maybe maybe a good way of, of thinking about frameworks is also they, they are meant to to provide mediation to to shared resources i mean maybe the library analogy is, is not the best one because i believe like libraries were not part of frameworks um there's a bit of a name confusion here because of the way touch works which is a bit unfortunate um, I believe libraries can be can be bundled, and we can be we can be really smart, and we have plans to be really smart about deduplication. So even though you know libraries are bundled, like we can still share the the um, they will not be duplicated on the system. We do deduplication on the fly. We do it on download. We do it on install. Like the store will help us here. Um, we have some we have some really good plans here. So um, so framework is really more about extending in the sense of adding capabilities um, for stuff like Zigbee is a, is a perfect example. Okay, that makes more sense. Awesome. Um, I didn't have any more questions. You've answered my personal questions. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Hang out with you. Where, where people... yeah, yeah, this is like, we're not broadcasting at all. This is just a personal. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> I just wanted to know this stuff. It's the easiest way to get you. you know. um, so we had a few questions. Uh, so uh, Ham Salad R Us asks, uh, "Will Stappy be available for my Basca Star Watcher telescope?" I had to Google that. I didn't know what a Basca Star Watcher telescope is, but it seems to be a, you know, automated controlled telescope for you know, looking up. So I would certainly love this. I mean, I would, I would like a telescope that runs Snappy. That's so cool. I would, <laughs> I would be delighted. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what kind of hardware it runs, um, but I mean, porting porting Snappy to um, to a new to a new ARM board, for example, is, is pretty straightforward. I mean, as long as you have um, you know a DTB for it, like a um, device tree, um, you know, you you can look at the examples for the Raspberry Pi two or for the BeagleBone. Um, it's not it's not a lot of stuff in the um, that needs that is needed in order to make it work. Uh, if you have a kernel, yeah, it works. I mean that. Uh, Obviously, if you need to port your kernel first and you need to write all this support code, it's kind of more tricky. It, it, you have two options, basically. You can first, if you want to do it yourself, go to developer.ubuntu.com slash snappy. There's the porting guide and all the other information. Um, if you have any problems, you can. You, there's also links how you can get more information. And uh, the second route would be to just propose this to the makers of, of your telescope. Oh, yeah. They might even save a lot of work. So, um, trying to understand that porting uh, question, if someone's already got a device that uh, already runs Linux, a Linux flavor of some kind, then uh, is that is this going to be an awful lot easier for them because a lot of that device enablement has already been done and you know you can repurpose some of that and then add our user space bits on top effectively yeah pretty much i mean yeah if if the device already works on linux you have a very good chance that it will work i mean um look at look at the look at the oem snap examples um this is this is one of the key features um again that we that we want to have in this release, making it really simple to port to different development boards or to different devices. Um, and because it, 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 you can upload it to the store, like, like if you enable it to your device, you can upload it to the store and you make it available for all the, you know, the, the thousands of people who use your telescope. I mean, it's amazing. Well, sorry. Um, you can upload OEM snaps to the store. Yeah. So if I do a port, basically, upload it to the store, People just run Ubuntu device flash something and then yeah. and all your friends can use it. Correct. It's great, isn't it? Who thought of this? <laughs> <Genius>. <laughs> and is there any kind of auditing on that? How do we how do we know that that's not no. malicious? We don't. We okay. we we have we have well, I guess for OEM snaps, there's no confinement because it's a, it's a confinement. Oh. It's the DTP. Yeah. You have to I mean it's the same thing as as grabbing an image from a forum and flashing on your device. How do you know? Right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is there? Do you foresee a uh, 
a certification program where there might be certified SNAPs where we have a maybe a relationship with an a device manufacturer and we can you know put a little tick on it and say we've certified that's good uh, whereas community people might maintain their own which might have extra crack in it that's that's cool and bleeding edge but isn't doesn't have the little tick yeah i think that that's exactly how it's going to work i mean i think you'll you'll we have an official channel to to provide these snaps and these images but what we're doing, I think, differently here is that we're also letting anybody that we are we're letting people use the same tools and distribution methods to to basically bootstrap these devices or create alternatives to the to the officially provided um, enablements. So I I think yes to both. We'll have we'll have both instead of just having the one right which we have today. Awesome. Uh, so moving on, the next question uh, from Glue, Glue, Glue. Uh, <laughs> how, well, this is how many bugs are there for Snappy at the moment? Would you say on the Launchpad? <laughs> I think this is a good opportunity to get people involved. So try to explain what's happening, where to get involved, who to talk to. <laughs> so how many bugs? That's that's a that's a really good question. Um, so um, we well, we don't know, right? I mean, like it's. It's the nature of bugs that. Well, it could have gone up by a thousand in the time it took you to walk to your hotel room. Or yeah, something. Exactly. <laughs> it's yeah, it's hard to know. It's it's a couple. It's maybe maybe I don't know forty open ones right. we know about right now. Some of them are pretty straightforward. So if you want to, you know, you do a little bit of Go hacking. Um, Snappy is written in Go. It's it's a fantastic language. Like if you don't know it yet, and if you do know it, you know, that's a fantastic language. Um, Code is well tested, like um, it's well structured. So you know, if you if you if you just feel like getting involved, just look at you know, launchpad.net slash snappy and um, you know. yeah, the bugs are there, the code is there. The release is next week. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good time to jump in. So uh, the release of like uh, does the release of snappy coincide with like the six month desktop releases, are there is there a more is there a fast paced cadence? Is there a channel I can be on to get bleeding edge stuff? You know, how how do the releases work? T V D. To be defined. Okay. Uh, yeah, but but we do have like we do have two channels right now. We will have more channels in the future. We do have a devil proposed channel, which is essentially a daily snapshot. Um but it, it's you know, it is it is actually quite good. It is not like crack of the day. Um it is because because we have stuff like um, you know tarmac and CI running on top of our builds, we you know the, the build is fairly stable. But we also have a, a developed channel which essentially is stuff we manually test and it's released. It depends a little bit. Like every couple of weeks, right now we, we plan to make this much much more frequent, and that is an image that is manually tested and. Fine. Yeah, this is, and you, yeah, sorry. Go no, no, go no, I just thought that uh, like the snappy world reminds me a lot of Ubuntu in the very early days because there's a lot of crazy people trying to do <laughs> a lot of different crazy things, and they're all hanging out together. And I think it's it's very similar oh, yeah. in that regard. It's like very uh, if you're a pioneer, it's it's a brilliant time because we have cloud people hanging out there, yeah. kernel people, uh, app developers test writers, all of them. And if you can just join the join the crew, just uh, yeah. go to hash snappy on, on Freenode or the, the mailing lists and and uh, get involved there, like writing tests, for example, yeah. or do manual testing, or just try to port your software in, into a snap, make it work. That's, yeah. that's oh. going to be a brilliant contribution. And you're probably going to find some issues or stuff that could be improved. Um, do it. Which we'll be re really happy to hear about. Like really at this point, if you come in and try and package your application and, and you run into problems, we really want to know about the problems, whether they are bugs, documentation issues, uh, our approach to something has been hard to comprehend. Like all of this now is a fantastic time for us to hear about it because we're right now we're very nimble, flexible. We're a small team of really crazy and smart people. So 
I prefer the term agile. But, uh, <laughs> agile. <laughs> Sorry. Agile. So, <laughs> we, we have a few more questions, and uh, we've got 15 minutes left. So um, I'll give you a couple of them. Uh, one, uh, can, I, can Ubuntu Phone run Vim or Apache web server? <laughs> well, I can answer that one, yes. Uh, we actually shipped Vi out of the box, I think. Yes. Uh, to some people's consternation that we don't ship Emacs. I think we have <laughs> Nano and Vi, but not Emacs, which... You already have one that's on the front. Why would you have another one? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, send hate mail to dholback at ubuntu.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> for me. And the Apache web server one, I've seen You know, people uh, make their phone rewrite and then you know I've get install Apache two and then you know show the web browser connected to one two seven zero zero one and it's a fun and it's a cool thing to do you know knowing that you can put a web server on your phone but um, yeah you might want to look at other ways to do that um, it's cool but we have on Snappy there is a Snap that is a web server that serves XKCD comic yes, nice the first application we wrote just after Hello World <laughs> excellent. Uh, so the next question uh, is from the future of Tuna. Mm. Uh, even though I really like the idea of separated click snappy apps on Unity 8 on the phone and desktop, I've seen an unofficial app store that before installation gives the user a prompt saying it could break your phone. Is it possible to have a sandboxed area that can hold such unofficial apps together that if something goes wrong, doesn't affect the entire system and require a reinstallation? So we would put apps in a sandbox in a sandbox? Well, I think this is more the fact that we've got, you know, we've got our official store, which has sandboxed in, uh, apps. But then there's this separate third-party store, which is not sandboxed, the, the one that Zanetti uh, set up, yeah. so that people could put, like, stuff that could not go in our store, because the confinement or lifecycle policy would prevent it from operating the way it, the way the user would want it. So, I mean, the reason why we have the central store model is because we enforce that something is properly sandboxed and confined. If you, so the, the device depends on the server having enforced that. If you don't enforce that, then all bets are off, right? I mean, the device by default only will only install applications that have been signed by the store. So you're, you're having to explicitly say, yes, I know this wasn't verified in any way. Yes, I want to sell it anyway. And so I mean, having a separate store that, that allows unconfined, and then you want to confine it again on, this, on the device seems weird. <laughs> well, so uh, imagine a company uh, wants to hand out uh, devices to their their employees. Yeah. They might want to have confined apps on their employee devices, but restrict those applications and not put them in the public store, but only put them in their own store. Yeah. So we have a solution for that. So we we do offer. You can get a sub store, right? So if you if you want to ship a device and you only want and you want sort of your own store. We, we offer that, right? You can have your own store, and you can, and we offer you a lot of knobs. So we allow you to ship your own store, which is an overlay on top of the general store. So you get all the apps that are in the store, Ubuntu store, plus a set of uh, specific apps that are exclusive to your store. Or you can have a store that is an island, and, and only the things that get uploaded to your store are available there. Or you could say, you could combine different stores. So we have, offer a lot of knobs, and we allow you to, to also specify whether you want the application to be automatically published or you want to manually review all of them. So we do have the tooling for, for device builders and people who are building products to, to own the whole experience. But okay. we, still, we still take on the burden of making sure that whatever goes through it is properly confined. OK, thank you. Uh, another question from the future of Tuna. Uh, are there plans to have all Unity 8 apps submitted by developers to be fat packages by default? Or will there always be some apps that can only be used on the phone or an ARM device, even though they could very well be used on the desktop or any x86 device too? 
Enforcing this is probably going to be hard. Like, <laughs> if you build something uh, as an RMHF binary, it will be hard to automatically. What's that? No, mean? but I, I guess I guess you know if. From my perspective, I've got an x86 Android tablet and an ArmHF Android tablet. And sometimes when an app appears in the store on the zero day, I install it on my ArmHF tablet and it works fine. Uh, but it doesn't work on my x86 tablet for right. somebody because there's a binary bit missing. Um, and, you know, what we could do potentially in the store is tell developers, I don't know, that you have submitted an app but it's only got an arm hf do you realize that it won't work on you know these devices or you've submitted it x86 it won't work on these devices yeah i mean in our, i'm not sure what android does but if you submit an app that is that only works on arm hf it from an x86 device it, that app doesn't exist so you go to the store that app doesn't exist we only show you apps that are installable so you, will, you, you won't get apps that don't work, you just won't get access to those apps. Uh, I think that, yes, we can make it very clear to developers the the, the, the consequences and what, what market percentage or what percentage of users they are being able to target based on what they upload. And it's not just architecture, right? It's what frameworks, what, like, there's, there's a whole set of other variables that, that makes it a subset. So, yes, I think it would be useful for developers to know. I I don't I don't foresee us enforcing any of this in the near future. Right. Yeah, that that makes sense. You know, if I have a, a licensed binary component that I you know I just don't have an x86 build for, and I can't possibly ever have one, then I wouldn't want it to stop me uploading it to the store. Well, you don't care, right? So you, like you, this is a side project that you, you're doing on your free time, and you made it work on our on HF and. You know, it'll work on Google Gold Black, but not on your laptop. Right. That's okay. So we're low on time. There's a couple of questions. There's one uh, I'm not entirely sure about this. Uh, if the Snappy team intend for Snappy to overtake apt-get on the desktop, uh, does the team see Snappy process integral to Ubuntu TV milestones? Have they heard anything to the degree on this end? And then it kind of tails off. Uh, someone else is asking, what do you mean by Ubuntu TV milestones? Um, so I'm not quite sure. Uh... The good news is that we have people wearing multiple hats, like people who are involved with app are also involved with Snappy. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I still whatever have... the outcome is, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah don't, don't worry. I, I love app and I, I, I still you know, had maintaining it and, and write code for it and upload it to new version just the other day. So, you know, it is it is fine and it, it is it is very healthy. It's it's just it's a different use case, right? I mean like 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 we can solve problems with app that we can't solve with Snappy and vice versa. Um, it's as simple as this. I mean, you know, it's I'll give you one one final question uh, uh, yeah. from Gloom. How do Snappy and Click relate to GNOME sandboxed applications, XDG app? They don't. I, I, they don't relate. Like I've, I've seen that for on and off. I, I, I don't. I don't know if you know any any more details. I, I think it surfaced. Like Click, we, it's been about about three years now. I think. Uh, so I think that that effort probably. I don't know. We don't know. We haven't been following at all. Relatively speaking, Click is has been around. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe, the, maybe it started before. Like I, I really don't know. Like I've only recently seen it kind of resurface or start. So I, I don't know if it's been lingering for ten years. Or, I, I think it's a great. I think it's a great idea. That's why we did it. And I think that it's, if they, if they awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's maybe it's worth pointing out. I mean, the idea of self-contained applications that you can download and, and run. I mean, that's not exactly new. I mean, like like. I remember at Guadec in like 2007 or 8, like I sat down with Ryan and we talked about an, ap an application model called Gritty, which was very similar. And but because there was X and confining X is really hard, you know, it never get it, got anywhere. But um, the idea of this is not you know, it, it is not new. It is it is lingering. Yeah. Brilliant. 
Okay, that's that's all of the questions. Uh, I don't have any more, and uh, we're coming up to the end. So I just want to say thank you all for joining us with all your insights on uh, Snappy. Thanks, uh, thanks thank very you. much, and yeah, uh, we'll yeah, see yeah. everyone again next week. Brilliant. Uh, you have to press the button now, Daniel. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, well, thanks, guys. See you. Cheers. Safe travels.